Everybody, we are back. It is Taped on Live. It's your favorite Raiders podcast, favorite Raiders channel, favorite Raiders everything. We are back. You guys already know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the like button if you like it. Hit the dislike button if you don't like it. Leave a comment if you like it. Leave a comment if you don't like it. All right? And you guys already know what to do as well. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at the Mark John NFL. At BD Williams 18. My man Matt Holder and Matt Holder 95. And then of course Panda Supplements, pandasubs.com. TDL, 35% off. Right? Go ahead, you know, get you some focus. You know, I'm trying to give me some focus. I gotta, you know, make sure make sure to be getting these film articles and everything out to you guys and film breakdowns, right? Checking out this preseason tape and then you know, so you get some product, get some protein, and I know we got some workout uh, workaholics out there. So definitely appreciate you guys checking us out, right? BD, um, we're here to talk preseason week two review, I believe, correct? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, yeah, so yes, doing so. a preseason week two review. Uh, do you got any opening thoughts for us? Yeah, really, my first opening thought is 30 guys stayed in Vegas. Didn't even make the trip doing a preseason game. Dolphins played their ones, like for the, at least the first series or two, whatever it was, you know. Um, and we still, Raiders still, you know, hit them in the mouth, especially, you know, the twos going up against their ones, you know, uh, they weren't able to drive down the field. They weren't able to score on that first drive. So mm-hmm. I think that that is, um, I think that's, pretty encouraging because when the ones do get out there when Crosby and Chandler Jones and Denzel Perryman get out there, right? Nate Hobbs, you know, he's getting out there. Uh, I think that, I mean, right now the defense has been, especially in the first half of these games, it's been really effective and none of the best players are even playing yet. So uh, I, I, I'm encouraged by that. You know, just the fact that they were able to lead 30 guys back and still win a preseason game when the other team was playing their ones. That's mm-hmm. a, a really good sign of where this talent level on this on this roster is, how close this team is to really competing. Um, and really, that's my initial thoughts. Okay. Uh, I mean, my initial thoughts, I mean, the offensive line played terrible. They got their butts kicked. Talk about ones versus twos. Yeah, you know, they went against Christian Wilkins and Jalen Phillips and Emmanuel Ogba and, and – I don't know who 43 is. I know he started because I've seen him before. And uh, whoever the other defensive end is. I mean, yeah, and they just kind of got their, their butts kicked by a lot of stunts, a lot of just being better than the man in front of you, kind of a lot of things. But uh, stunts were the worst thing. I think I think it looked really, really bad on TV because of the stunts. I mean, they were missing a lot of those. And, of course, you know, Alex Leatherwood was, was – terrible against the twos which i thought was interesting i I didn't understand that he played against twos and he was worse and you know john simpson played a lot parham played a lot um but i mean the skill players look awesome so i mean really nothing to talk about i mean skill players look like the skill players they've been looking all all the whole time and really nothing changed i mean johnson looked good um i i think white is an interesting running back i mean i'll probably do a breakdown him separate because you know, everybody wants to talk about offensive line. I know that's what they want. To, they, I, that's what the people want to see. I mean, they don't. I don't. I don't, they don't want to see me slender as mere white. So, um, he's he's an interesting back. Interesting if the run blocking isn't great. Um, I'm gonna show a couple clips of him, but you know, I'll def, def, definitely different. Do a different breakdown of him later on. But uh, um, I, I just think Josh Jacobs is gonna get a lot of run. I just think he's going to get a lot more run than we think of. They're probably going to try to run him in the ground, in my opinion. Um, and you're going to see a lot more Brandon Bolden than we think. And we're going to see a lot more Amir Abdullah than we think um, before we actually see Zemir White. That, I, that's what I, I'm just taking a guess from just how, how he's been playing a little bit. I mean, he hasn't been, like, off the charts. You know, he had a touchdown. But at the first game, you know, he was really good. But the last couple of games have been a little up and down. And yeah, I feel like he's a little more. So, what's the line. deal? What's the deal with Zamir White? Is it a vision thing? Is it? It seems to me like he's not going to make that first guy miss. He's he's more likely that's, that's to what just it is. Run through that guy than make that guy miss. He, he just needs a good line. That's all. He needs good route blocking. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's that. all. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Um, because I mean a lot of running backs get away with that, but I just it, if you're having a bad run blocking day, he's not gonna, you know, make uh zero yard loss five yards basically is what I'm saying. Yeah. So um, that's what that's what that's what we're kind of realizing a little bit more. Maybe maybe it's just me. I'm watching Damian Pierce. I'm just jealous. So uh, maybe that's part of it. I don't know. <laughs> the Damian Pierce clips are just. No, I'm not saying he's on a practice squad, guys. I'm not getting crazy. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying that he's. I I don't know how much run he's going to get in the in the regular season. I don't know. Like even just, that's a what, for a fantasy thing. I don't know if you guys want to pick up Zemir White. I don't know how much run he's actually going to get because you know if you think about it, Josh Jacobs, and then you got Amir Abdullah, you got Brandon Bolden, right? So it's three backs, so you can't have a four back run. But it's, it'll be interesting. Uh, it's just just something to, to to point out a little bit. Um, so yeah. you're saying this about Bolden. Beat writers seem extremely confident Bolden's making the team. Um, is it just because like he's been shelved? He hasn't because I haven't seen him much in the preseason. I mean, right? I mean, he seems like so. That. Is, so it's like, old man is, for something. Is it, that's what it is? Is just because he hasn't been getting any play time. It seems like his spot is safe. Is yeah, that what I mean, it is? I, that would be shocking if they let him go. Since he didn't, he's, he's, I mean, he's been healthy and like he's been missing practice. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right, right. He's not Have you, did you watch Bolden like from the Patriots? Did you watch him at all? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I watch the Patriots offense a lot. So, I mean, he's not really a. He's more of like a receiving back than he is a. A third down receiving back, basically. I mean, that's more of the the like a down running back. That's what I'm talking about. I think you know, and when you talk about they release Kenyon Drake, I guess it's something we should talk about. I mean, he, he's going to get a lot of run there because I think Jacobs is going to be the first and second down back. Yeah, and that means if they pass on first down, I think it's going to be Jacobs out there. They pass on second down, it's probably going to be Jacobs out there because Jacobs is not bad enough where he's like a liability. As a, as a pass blocker, or he's a liability in the pass game. He's not bad enough there. So he can, first, second down, he's the vice, but like third down, they're going to want some more effective yes. pass catcher. Right? Yes. And I think that's, that's where Bolden and Abdullah comes in. Now, if let's say Jacobs gets hurt, all right, then of course White would probably take that first and second role. Right. But I, I wouldn't expect that to happen but i did see uh you know shout out to john m on um twitter he did show that they had six running backs the patriots kept last year they kept six running backs last year because we're not talking about uh Jacob johnson i hope i said his name correctly this time but oh is uh, it yeah it's a, okay it's Jacob. so Jacob, hold on yeah. now they kept they kept six backs on the initial 53 yes yeah six running backs were any of those guys like running back slash receivers or something like that? I don't know. I think some of them might have fell off and joined the practice squad later. I think they just on the initial 53. And then they like, because then, because basically what happens, you keep it down the initial 53, you kind of keep them from getting the practice squad. Yeah. You take it out first because then people already pick up all their guys that they want off the practice squad, off waivers. And then you can cut them later and then pick them up a little easier. I mean, kind of more of a strategy thing, in my opinion, because I think they only kept four. So no J.J. Taylor. I just know like J, guys like J.J. Taylor were hanging around because if there's injuries and here comes J.J. Taylor getting up, getting carries, you know what I mean? So um, hmm. it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Let's see. Six backs. I hope they do not keep six backs. Gosh. <laughs> and, and let, unless those four backs be behind the top two, are running down on punt and tackling guys. I doubt it. You don't ever see a back running down and, and tackling someone on a punt or kickoff or something like that. So, uh, I I mean, unless, you know, those backs have serious return ability, that might have been the reason for the Patriots. Were those backs, with, you know, kickoff returners? Is that is that maybe why they were kept around or something no, like that? No, All right, well – that seems extremely strange. That that would be that's that's a huge outlier in the way that teams are structuring their rosters in, in the NFL the past like fifteen years. I mean, the amount uh, of there times. Bolden's a special teams guy. There you go. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. He's gonna be on special teams. He's got to be. I mean, come on. Um. Yeah. All right. So, well, well. All right. Well, we'll see. I mean, I, I'm glad Kenyon Drake is gone. It kind of clears 
the waters here. You know, um, it, it said, their report said that they were trying to make a deal happen with Kenyon Drake, but who's taking on a salary for, for you know, um, he definitely um, was paid more than what really like his value is across the league. So that's on Mayock and Gruden for putting the Raiders in that situation now where they can't trade this guy if he was, you know, if uh, if he was a couple million less, you know what I'm saying, or a million and a half less, maybe they could have traded him. But, um, but yeah, so, um, so, yeah, so the backs we talked about, you want to talk about any wide receivers? Keelan Cole had a great game. Yeah, yeah, he can't go play. He played play well. I, I do want to say that, you know, I, I did break the Abdullah thing first. Abdullah getting more run than Kenyon Drake. I saw somebody try to give Albert, Albert Breer that credit. Nope, that was that was your boy, training camp live, 731, just saying. Anyways, um, but yeah, the wide receivers, they look, they look great. Uh, I, I really don't. I'm kind of tired. Johnson looks great. Keelan Cole, he, he looks good. Um, but, you know what I'm saying, I, if I had to choose between them, it would probably be Johnson just because of the explosiveness and he's a little bit younger. But, you know, I, I really hope Mac Collins doesn't get a lot of run on third down. That's kind of like a, my thing. Like, if he's going to be out there, I'd rather him be like a first, second down guy than have those other two be two guys be the third down wide receivers that kind of come in because they can get open can more consistently when, when they need to against, like, man coverage. When you see more man coverage on third down. Um, so that, that that would just be my hope. But who, who knows? Um, you know, Mac Collins, he doesn't kind of take into those third down snaps when they need somebody to get open. That's all. That's all I feel about it. What is Matt Collins' rob tree? Where does he win? I mean, uh, like a, a go route, I guess. Yeah, that's it, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and does he win the go route? I mean, it's, it's, it's more about that. Is he winning? Like, if you need him to win yeah. on the third down. I mean, I'd rather have those other guys out there. But, you know, I know Matt Collins is more tougher, bigger receiver. So, if they, you know, they're running the ball or they want to mix in block. some play action. Or yeah. mix in some play action where he's not having to, you know, it's third and eight. We need him to win. You know what yeah. I mean? That's, the, that's kind of the different the, the way I look at it. But, yeah. Uh, six wide receivers is interesting, too. You know, because, you know, I saw somebody, they kept one running quarterback the last time. They did some weird stuff over there. You know? They also they just they just traded Nick Mullins. I know they traded Nick Mullins. Uh, you know, Jared Stidham kind of he definitely had a probably his best game. I would say Nick Mullins did not have a great game. You know, Chase Garbers was out there with guys who who are not going to play in the NFL probably, and yeah. um, some of those guys I have no idea who they were. I was like, who, who's who's fourteen? You know, I was trying to. <laughs> Have you have you look at deep at the the roster? So, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't expect a lot from from uh, Garbers. I, I, I mean, he might make the practice squad too, but I don't see anybody picking him up. He's not put, he's not putting out Skylar Thompson tape. But Skylar Thompson was looking. So I don't know if the Dolphins um, with that because <laughs> because the Dolphins let him go. The Raiders need to go hit him up on the practice squad really quick. That's all I was, I was watching Skylar Thompson for like. <laughs> He scored two touchdown oh, drives. He came yeah. in that game and they scored twice. They should have scored. He, he, they won he that came game. in the game. They scored twice. Who was playing defense? I mean, he, he had Enzukama. So he's like, where's where's Eric? Right. And, and, and <laughs> Enzukama is going to be the three. Yeah. He's going to be a starter in the 11 personnel. Bro, that going throw up against the cover these two. guys. You can't, that, I don't care who's out there. That throw the cover two is crazy. I know you saw that. Um, you're talking about the, uh, the highlight catch? Is it called? No, 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 no. It's a, it's a different one. It's different. It's just like it's another one's as a comma. Yeah, he had a couple. Yeah, great. Um, but I mean, yeah, that guy you were talking about as a comma. You know, during the off season, it it shows. Yes, this guy's. I mean, look, Terry Kill, Jalen Waddle, as a comma. You know, they got some weapons over there. Um, and apparently, Tua throws the most accurate, beautiful ball ever in the history of, of football. So I didn't he, see I didn't see that, but hey, he, he was, he's talking about the he's talking about his his RPO quick slant, man. He, he, he definitely <laughs> the, hit most, the, the most beautiful slant. Yeah, yeah you should get Michael Thomas then. Michael Thomas and, and Tua have a 
a thousand yards on the slant play. I mean, that's uh, basically right. Danny's point. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Uh, so, so what are you getting into today? All right, I'm gonna get into Sean Bauer. To Sean Bauer had a breakout game. I mean, he's been playing well. This game, he was a force. Uh, fantastic game from Deshaun Bauer. You know, someone said Deshaun Bauer, number four. Yes, 100%. That's uh, not a question at this point. Maybe even number three, D end. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's really, it's 3A, 3B between him and Malcolm Koontz. Um, he had a fantastic see, I, game. I, I got a question for you. I'm not, I'm not going to interrupt you. I got a question. Yeah. So, I mean, Cleveland Farrell's been hurt for a long time. He's gone. He's out of here. Cleveland Farrell's lump. <laughs> He's not going to be on the, on the opening day roster. Okay, so, so I'm just going to devil's advocate here. I'm playing devil's advocate. Don't you think, like, if he was, like, kind of on the fence when he'd be trying to rush back, like, what's his injury? Like, he's been out since the 31st. Yeah, who knows? Who knows what it is? But um, maybe even – maybe for him, the writing's on the wall, so he's not going to rush back because he doesn't want to injure himself even further. He wants to play this year somewhere else. So maybe that's why he's not rushing back. Um, I'm just saying it, it could be the opposite. That's what I'm saying. It could be like, hey, hey you rest, you know, you know, you're going to be the back. You know, I'm just saying. Oh, I see. <laughs> like, because um, no. to me, right, I'm just just, just yeah. from like a competitive standpoint. And I, I think he's a competitive guy, no matter what, you know, however many you feel about him. You know, if you've got to fill your spot going away, like, what is this? What is this injury that I mean, he's been out since the 31st. I mean, like, this is a. It's been a month, but, dude. Like, and it's not <laughs> right, and it's not. Um, it's not like Deron Harmon. Everyone was like, "Oh, so Deron Harmon's the number two safety because he didn't travel." No, Deron Harmon's been playing in the NFL for like twelve years. He's a vet. They didn't. They gave him the week off. Okay, um, that's that's not Clean Furrow. Okay, yeah. and his spot is definitely not safe. What has he done on film to make his spot safe? Nothing. So it's just interesting to me that he's been hurt for so long. Yeah, and, and yeah, and and because he's hurt, it's not like he's healthy in training camp. And then they're like, okay, we've seen what we've seen from Cleveland Farrell. He's not going to travel with the team, and we're not going to play him in preseason. We've seen it. He hasn't even played, so he hasn't even proven anything. I I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. <laughs> but there's game. just because guys aren't playing, there's a million reasons why a guy isn't playing in the preseason. Yeah. And not everyone is in the same boat as Carr and Devontae Adams and Crosby and Chandler Jones. Not everyone's in the same boat. You know, um, so, some of these guys are hurt. Some of these guys are old. Some of these guys, maybe they're just like, hey, this guy's not even part of our plan, so there's no reason to even put him on the film. You know, so. Um, but, I mean, I get what you're saying. That's interesting. I'll eat crow. I'll come back here. I'll, I'll, I'll be like, look, Marcus is right. Clean for all made the team if he makes the team. But what? What I'm about to show you from Deshaun Bauer, okay, we have not seen from Colin Farrell. All right, so Deshaun Bauer, great great game. Also, uh, Curtis Bolton, breakout, breakout game. I think he secured his spot as the uh, as the fourth linebacker on this team. Uh, Curtis Bolton, man, just the only – he's really the only, only linebacker who's playing the scheme, playing the way that you should be playing in this scheme. He's the only guy who's done it in the preseason so far. It was a breath of fresh air. Not seeing Luke Masterson and Darian Butler dance around blocks. Curtis Bolton coming downhill fast, like maybe even Denzel Perriman. I mean, it was almost like how oh, Denzel Perriman is going to play it. So this is going to be a an intro. You, you'll see from you know some of these clips that I'm going to show you, this is what Denzel Perriman is going to be doing because this is what the scheme is asking. And obviously a guy like, Curtis Bolton, who's like 5'11", 230 pounds, similar athletic profile to a Denzel Perriman, you know, so uh, I think this is a good, um, uh, I guess, setting the, you know, in the future what we're going to see from Denzel Perriman. So uh, I'll just jump into defense first. You go, go ahead. That? Go ahead. All right, let's do it here. Let me make sure I got the right thing going on. Here we go. All right. So first things first, let's talk about Deshaun Bauer. Deshaun Bauer, big, big guy. You know, I said this on my live stream for the members only. He is listed as six foot five, two hundred and fifty pounds. Does this look like a guy who weighs two fifty? 
He looks like he weighs 275 at least. This is a big, big defensive end. And this is a play that does not go down in the stat book here, but he made this play. This is a fantastic play here where he's getting the boot action. Um, waggle, we get the uh, tight end coming across the formation. Watch what he does when he sees the tight end come across the formation. He hits him. And instead of this tight end getting more uh, more depth and more upfield, he has to now round it out. He's running five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Deshaun Bauer also gets in the quarterback's face, makes him pull the trigger a little early. Okay, And by the time he gets this guy gets tackled, it's for one yard. Deshaun Bauer made that play. Incredible effort right there. Didn't go in the stat sheet. Here's another one right here. Lined up as uh, as the edge here. Oh, we just saw a top five pick get cut and get an MCL torn. Okay. Deshaun Bauer, no, he's too strong for that. Okay. You see him put the elbow down, lower his weight. Okay. Folds this guy. This guy looks like he just ran into a wall or a fire hydrant. Are you kidding me? He got no push against him right there. Gets in on the tackle. Okay. This guy is a very physical player. Can play the run, can set the edge. Here's another one. Backside of zone. You're going to see him. Okay. What's he doing? He's making sure that quarterback gave the ball. And when he sees the ball goes in the quarter and the running back's gut, look at the way he tackles this guy. Hits him like a bag of bricks. Just yank. That's a strong tackle. That's a grown man tackle right there. Here's another grown man tackle. And fantastic instincts. Okay. He comes up field. Hits this t tackle. You see you see just the power that he has. Hits this tackle. Okay. Realizes, oh, it's a reverse coming back to me. 82 is like, oh, mama, I didn't I didn't realize I was blocking this guy. Okay. Just what a terrible effort right there from 82. And then <laughs> and look at the tackle. Okay. Around the shoulders. Wrestles him down like like this guy's a rodeo clown wrestling down a, a calf or something like that. Okay. Look at this guy. Oh my gosh. Physical. You get tackled like that. Okay. Trust me, you are not talking trash to anyone for the rest of the game. Okay. And then we saw some, you know, some pass rush. Some pass rush from, from him. Okay. We get the um this is this is in starts out as not a great rep. I think that they they should be uh, executing a twist here. He gets tied up a little bit, but he's really supposed to be um, letting Kendall Vickers get free, which he does. Okay, but then watch the hustle to detach, get in this quarterback's face, make him throw an errant ball down the sideline, so he gets some pressure right there. Here's another one. Okay, um, lining up on the defensive right side. Look at the get off. Okay, goes ahead. And hump, hump move, inside move, lands on the quarterback, gets the sack here. It's a power. He's a power player. Okay, we're not we're not talking about a guy who's going to edge corner around that edge and be a speed rusher or anything like that. He's a he's a power player, and he's not going to be a guy who's in there probably on third and longs. That's going to be Malcolm Coombs' job if Crosby or Chandler Jones get hurt or they need a blow. But certainly on first downs. When it turns into a run play or a, a run play turns into a pass play, uh, he's a guy I think he can really shove the, uh, these tackles around. He's got a lot of power. Okay, so that's Tashawn Bauer. Now let's talk about Curtis Bolton. Curtis Bolton, I don't think that he had a great game um, the first couple weeks. I didn't really see much out of him, um, but let's just let's just start here. Here he is. He's lined up as the tackle um, in punt. You see him here. Take, you know, one step, engage his guy, and then goes. He spreads the net. This is what, the, what we call this in special teams, spreading the net. So he gets to his landmark, running down the hash here, okay? Look at look at the speed. First guy down there, bam, splashes this guy, okay? Great, great move. Here's another one. This time he gets caught up inside, okay? Gets back out to his, his landmark. Look, he's running down the hash again, okay? And you see him here, track down the guy, hit him. Okay, involved in another special teams tackle. Okay, great effort. He can really run. Now here's another one. 36. Okay, gets the block, spreads the net, 
runs down to the guy. I would like to see him here instead of breaking down, just sprint right through this guy. He breaks down a little bit, gets, gets caught, but doesn't have to trip the guy up. Three special teams tackles involved and three special teams tackles on three different punts. Okay. Um, they, look, we're talking about the fourth linebacker here. Okay. Masterson not doing this on special teams. I'll tell you that right now. Okay. He has been a liability on special teams. One of those, one of those big plays from the first game where they had the lane open. That was that was on Masterson. Okay. Now let's look at defense. Actual defense. All right. This is a five man pressure. It's a blitz. And in this defense, when your guy, okay, this tight end. Is Curtis Bolton's guy. When your guy stays in the block, turns his back like he's not releasing on a right, you have the green light to go ahead and add on. Okay. And look at him just immediately pull the trigger. Okay. Gets there, gets a safety, forces the what uh forces the um uh intentional grounding from Teddy Bridgewater to get that safety. Um so that that's a that's a great uh example of first of all. Instincts, his intelligence in the scheme, and then also the athletic ability to pull the trigger and get there in a hurry. Okay, so that's a great example of that. Now, here's another one. 36, I'm gonna let this one run here. Okay. He gets that, he sees the screen, beats the block, makes the tackle. We see how fast he's processing here to go along with how fast he is actually as an athlete. So he's a fast player and he's got and he's got a fast brain. Okay, and those things usually that works well together. And then this is really how Denzel Perryman is gonna run up, uh, you know, play the run here. I have not seen this from Masterson. I have not seen this from um Darian Butler. Okay. Coming downhill, not trying to scrape over the top, come up, fire downhill. We see it, he gets that zone step. And he sees this opening and he just shoots it. Okay. Makes a fantastic tackle. Um, you know, also shout out to the three technique here, Neil Farrell. Okay. Taking on, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the one technique here, kind of um, um, getting into the backfield. And then also Kendall Vickers setting the edge, making a really hard edge to force this back to cut right back up into Bolton. But, you know, again, this is how Denzel Perryman is going to play it. We're going to see this from Denzel Perryman. So it's encouraging. I think it's great for, for a guy like Curtis Bolin to go in there and do it the right way when he's really trying to be Denzel Perryman's backup. So uh, I was super encouraged by both those guys' performances. That's why I chose to highlight those guys. You know, I could get I could get a little bit more deeper into Deshaun Bauer. He's not a perfect player. There's going to be times where he's a little slow to detach. There's going to be times where I think that the speed, he's trying to go for, you know, like a long arm or something like that, but he doesn't have enough speed to really sell that and pull those things off. I'm sure that he's going to continue to get better. I mean, he's gotten better every single game so far in the preseason, you know. Um, so as far as it goes, being a guy who's going to be a backup to two premier edge players in the NFL – He's not going to get a lot of playing time once the season starts. So it's right now, these these are his reps for getting better, and he is proving that he is getting better. And for me, a guy who's playing like that, Deshaun Bauer, I'm talking about right now, a guy who's playing like that, dominating the game, really, like almost every single def- like uh, great defensive drive, Deshaun Bauer is making a play. And, and that, you know, against the run, against pass, you name it, I, I mean, I would be extremely shocked to see him not make the final roster I, I'm like, look, bet it right now. He is on the final 53. Um, when, you know, when it gets announced, he's making this team. Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, uh, I always thought he had a shot because he just had a just familiarity with, you know, how they want to play defensive line over there. Um, I thought he always had that familiarity. So I, I really knew that he had, he had a shot. But, you know, Bolton, you know, when I was watching defense too, yeah, Bolton stood out a lot, man. I used, he was all over the place. That was very interesting to watch. I feel like uh, Neil Farrell felt like he finally had your bro Cox behind him. Um, right. <laughs> linebacker, <when he's, laughs> sometimes Neil Farrell, yeah. he, he like he would like set it up, but there's no linebacker coming. It's just like he's he's like, where's the? He's like, well, oh, I'm supposed to shed still. Like you know, he's 
like he was confused because he said those play with LSU linebackers, Patrick Queen, those dudes coming for the yeah. gap. So, you know, uh, you know, that's what saw some how Farrell plays. You know, he, he's he needs to get over that, but I think he's he's a little bit dependent on linebackers, and, and you can kind of tell that he wasn't making that much of an impact that he was making because the guys behind him weren't feeling like he was expecting, I believe. So, because I don't know why he doesn't shed. I mean, it's and, a lot of high, high, yes. high pat level, but whatever. I mean, Farrell had his best game. Mm-hmm. You saw I, there was definitely um, snaps in there where he had a great get off, you know, um, where he was getting into the backfield. What your point is about it, and this is just across the NFL, it does not matter what scheme you're in, okay? You cannot give yourself up. It's not good enough to be like, okay, I'm in my gap. You got to detach, you got to, mm-hmm. you know, disengage off that blocker, whether you're in a single gap scheme, a two gap scheme playing a heavy technique you're you're you know, whatever okay you got to detach it's not good enough to just give yourself up he's gonna get over that he's gonna keep on watching jonathan hankins jonathan hankins is in his ear i've seen him on the sidelines during the broadcast jonathan hankins is always standing right next to neil farrell you know he's gonna he's gonna get over that but to your point about the linebacker play these linebackers, you know, and I, and I showed you guys last week when everyone was complaining and crying about the run defense and saying, oh, run defense is a problem and everything like that. What was I showing you? I was showing you the linebackers dancing around blocks. Yeah. And you, you are not doing your defensive line any favors because when you come downhill with a hurry, now guys can't double you, right? You're forcing these guards who are trying to double the, uh, the defensive tackles, you're forcing them to come off and actually block you as a linebacker. That's yeah. what this scheme is meant to be, okay? Um, so when you see Luke Masterson and Darian Butler dancing around and trying to, you know, head fake guys, no, it's you need to come down like a hammer mm-hmm. hard on the line of scrimmage that's going to get these guys now one-on-ones and not being double-teamed all game. Um, but Perriman's going to do it. We saw glimpses of Diablo doing it. I know that um, Jayon Brown – is going to do it because he's played in the scheme before. He knows that that's what's necessary. And now, finally, Curtis Bolden, the only guy so far in the preseason amongst these other guys that is actually coming downhill and playing the run the right way. Those are the four linebackers, if I had to make my prediction right now, that are going to start the season. All right. Uh, this question for you, BD. Uh, are you concerned about the interior pass rush, or is there enough players on the roster to make it, to make it not a complete atrocity? I'm not concerned about the interior pass rush. Um, you know, right now these these um, offensive lines are are able to slant and double Kendall Vickers. Like, you think Kendall Vickers is going to get doubled in the regular season? And Crosby and Jones are out there. Okay, they're all going to get one on ones for the rest of the year. Okay, they're going to be really focused on stopping the edge rush. That means the interior guys are going to you know be in optimal situations. And because there's going to be such a rotation, I think Pico has shown that he can really get upfield. I think a guy like Vickers, Butler, Matthew Butler, the rookie, those guys are going to get in the mix as far as being an interior pass rusher. And later on in the year, okay, when you got, you know, if it's Butler and Pico and Vickers, you know, whoever the defensive tackles are, okay, you got these guys subbing in and they've only played 15 snaps and the guard has played 60 snaps so far, right? Mm-hmm. Fresh legs, right? When it's one-on-one situation, I think that the interior pass rush is going to be just fine. I'm not worried about that. Plus, Patrick Graham is going to scheme the hell out of it. He is going to make sure these guys are getting free. If that means three-man games or you know stunts and you know twists, whatever you want to call them, that's going to happen on the interior. I'm not worried about it at all. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we can do an offensive line here. So hold up, real quick. Yeah, we go over the uh, this. Uh, so it's time to get depressed, guys. Sorry. Why depress anybody? We start, started high. We're about to end on a low note. Is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, 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 ending on a low note here. Um, you know. So it, it just wasn't a. I don't. I don't know. What the, I don't know what the hell they're doing. To be honest, I I do want to make comments about some of the, just my thoughts on O line. I, I think the the rotations they're doing. Well, yeah, they're good for 
like their evaluation. I don't know if it's good for them, the players as a whole, because they got new guys next to them. They got, you know, John Sims is next to this guy and then Parham's next to this side of Adams, but he's just on this side of James. And then, you know, um, Leatherwood and Cotton has a different person next to him every single time. And then Leather, you know, Illuminors has a different person next to him. Yeah, for evaluation, you know, it's cool. And I get it for their, how they want to look at it. You know, they want to see who can play where and all the rotations. I still think O line needs continuity. Yeah. And I think that once they get some continuity, they might play better. Because so I think that's what happened last year when they got to the end of the year. Yeah. Like, the same five for a whole year and they started to play better together. So I, I think that's important to pick a five and just go. But I think a lot of the moving around is causing some, conf- just mentally is causing confusion for, for what they want to do and what, what positions they're at and how they handle things and how they communicate and what they're picking up and who's picking up where, and who's supposed to do what, you know, there's uh so yeah, it's, it's, it's like, it's good for them to evaluate the coaches, but I, I still think, Continuity is important. I just want to say that. That's just my opinion there. I don't, I don't know how you feel about that, BD, but. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, I guess, I mean, I, I guess it's proof that they are not sold on these guys and in, in the spots that they're in right now, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I mean. So for them, it's like, what, what, what's the point of building continuity when we don't even know who's going to be starting where at this point, I guess, so. Yeah, it it is concerning that the offensive line is like a, a, probably the main concern right now. Yeah, uh, I know I know people are worried about the interior defensive line. I know, um, and, and maybe they add a guy. Maybe they add a number two. Okay, um, and he and he would be great as a pass rusher. You know, that would really boost this team for sure on the defensive side of the ball. But a guy like Patrick Graham, he can figure out how to supplement things that aren't great, and he's done and he's made a track record of it. He had a top ten defense without a single. Um, uh, edge player, you know, like he had a top, had top 10 defense and he was having to simulate all this pressure, send all, you know, he can make it work. But is Josh McDaniels really going to be able to make it work with this offensive line, like at, in this state that it's in right now? I mean, I, that is concerning because th- that should be really your backbone of your team. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, uh, it's just it's just interesting, you know, because I, f- I feel like if if they're gonna keep these guys, there's already like a five there. So you want to if you want to mess with that, or if you want to put in Parham at center, which I think he's played better at anyways. You want to put him in there for James. I mean, I just feel like there's a there's a five there, and then you want to replace Parker or something, and kind of work in there. I don't know. I just kind of feel like they they could have handled it just a little. Di- they shouldn't be in this position, in my opinion. That's what I'm saying. Like they're like betting on these guys to get better. And I don't know if that's happening. So, but we'll see. I mean, there's no game planning either. So, that, you know, that, that has to do with offensive line too, offensive line's game plan. So we'll see. I don't know what they do, but you know, let's just break it down. Let's just watch yeah, it. Yeah, right? jump into it. Let's see. No, let's do it. Show the people. Show the people what we got. All right, so uh, I'll start with a couple of the stunts that they had issues with here. Um, this one is the first one. This is a, a second down, I believe, to Tyron Johnson. Right. So let's go ahead and run this real quick. So what you're going to see, you're going to see Wilkins. He's going to come over here. And you're going to see 43 come around, right? So, I mean, they, they got five on the line. So, you know, usually they say so it's a, a tackle and stunt. But when you got this type of alignment, it looks a little different. But here comes Wilkins. He's coming this way, but James does not see it. He does not see Wilkins going towards Parham, right? I don't know if he thinks Wilkins is going past him, but he's pushing him right out of the pocket. He doesn't see it at all, right? So he knocks him on the ground, but it kind of just knocks out Parham in the first place, right? Parham's out of there. And then here comes 43 right around. And the quarterback. Okay. Now, I I know know people, I I posted on Twitter, I know some people talk about Cotton, right? Cotton made the quick choice to go help Leatherwood, right? And he should be more aware here and be more patient, just not be so quick to help Leatherwood, in my opinion. I think that's correct. But I don't know if it's fully on him. We'll see later, like, uh, somebody else in the same situation, see how that goes. All right? But 
Stunts are a problem. I mean, they've been a problem the whole time. You know? I mean, they've been beat on stunts all preseason, and it's been free guys. All right. Now, another stunt. Here we go. This one is a better design stunt, but it's not as much on James as I would say. But, you know, these, these guys still got to see these things, right? So we got Cotton here. Cotton, he's going inside. He's rushing towards James. Like, he's basically supposed to come take James out. I don't know if you guys remember this from the Jets game a couple years ago, but they used to just basically knock these guys out all game. And they did this all game, and James doesn't see it. So he's getting knocked out here, right? And then free hitter right to the quarterback. And then Jared Stidham makes a nice throw right there. Makes a nice play. Now, you just watch some of the other linemen on this one, too, doing the stunt. Right? Luminor, he has a good rep. Look at Luminor. Luminor had a really good game, I thought. Right? It's not full on vertical set. Good hand usage right there. Kind of controlled him with one arm, couldn't get around him. Leatherwood does better on this rep against a, a pretty good pro, Ogba, right? So you got Ogba coming up against Leatherwood. Leatherwood does a good job anchoring, get his hands back inside. So it's good rest from everybody else, but the stunt got him. And you know, I, I just I just like this play call because you get Darren Waller one on one. I really hope Derek Carter doesn't come off it like Jared Stidham did. <laughs> Because I feel like he just threw it to him like from the beginning. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. So another one, we get play action here, right? And this time Leatherwood gets beat, so it's Parham. I think Stidham does a good job of stepping up in the pocket this one. So let's watch this one back. Illuminor is just, he just, you know, he got the chip help over here, right? And, you know, I talked about this on TDL earlier in the instant reaction about they kind of just left Leatherwood without chips by himself. Like, Leatherwood just basically without the wheels off, right? And you kind of see that he got beat by a pretty damn good Christian Wilkins. I mean, this is a good move by Christian Wilkins. You see he put, so let's watch this. Comes outside, right? Leatherwood gets his hands in, but Christian Wilkins gets him leaning a little bit. He's able to hold on to his arms, rip through it, <laughs> right to the quarterback. I mean, that's a defensive tackle, guys. That's a pretty good bit for that. D tackle. And then you can see here Parham's getting his butt kicked on the other side here, right? This guy got a long arm. He's just, his pad level is way too high. You kind of see the play strength here, and he's able just to rip through past him too. So it just it was just, it was all bad in the first series. It was just it was just bad everywhere, bad stuff. Another play right here. This one's you got a quick one, quick throw, but you still see a little bit of a. Leatherwood, I mean, if if Keenan Cole doesn't get open here, I mean, it's a little bit of pressure right here, right? From Jalen Phillips, his chest is wide open. Look at he doesn't even have his hands up. Boat. <laughs> why, why does he not? Why does he have his hands so low all the time? Oh uh, yeah, right. I mean, he's, he's not even ready to punch or anything. And and, and you know, it, it's not that he's not in position. I mean, he's there. If he he's just not punching. He's not ready to punch. And then boom, right? He's getting pushed back. The run, you know, in the run game, though, is where Leatherwood is really good. And you kind of see here him getting pushed here, right? He kind of wins this. I mean, you kind of see where James is not good against a run is in these power runs because he's getting pushed back, right? I mean, James is, I mean, even if James doesn't really have that bad of technique right there, and even he's, you see his pad a little high right there, he doesn't have the play strength to, to get any push. But Leatherwood is pushing the student to the back of the end zone. So it's a touchdown. This is actually just a good run by Zimmer White. Right here, right? Get right there, get skinny, find that hole, play through power. And that's where Zemir White is going to be good, right? Playing the red zone, getting some touchdowns. All right, here we go. Another one here. So I want to show this one. This is a, a outside zone run, right? So show the offensive line this one. I think, I mean, this is pretty – Pretty good run blocking on this one. That's what I was talking about. Zamir White not seeing everything because stop it right here, right? Now, outside zone where you got the bounce, you can either just hit it right here or you can cut back, right? And I think he has either he could be decisive and just go right here because I think this is good run blocking. But he kind of hesitates a little bit. And maybe he thought he can get this cutback because if he hits this cutback, 
right? He can do that. But he doesn't do either one, and it just ends up being nothing. So I was just kind of talk about the vision there with that one, and then we're going to show the guy who got cut. <laughs> Run a little bit better. You see the outside zone again. Do a good job on this one, the good double teams right there. And you see Cotton go to the second level, and you see him hit the cutback and cut back in and get yardage. So, I mean, that's kind of the best, better way for outside zone to look there. All right. Here we go once again. This is pretty clean right here. Nothing crazy. I think I think Leatherwood does a good job of, you know, when you have the kind of the speed rush, right? The guy's kind of just, he's overbending himself, right? He's, he's trying to get this beat you and he's trying to wrap around the corner. Just push him around. And yeah. Quarterback just steps up. Yep. Good job. You can miss miss a, a, a open Johnson. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, so I'm saying it wasn't all bad the whole game. Just push him up, push him away, right? And then you know you, you feel how you feel. So so here we go. Now we got Mick Mullins in the game. A little different. We got John Simpson in the game, right? Simpson's got a little action, but you see, I really think Parham is. Oh, I thought I think he played really well at center, in my opinion. I thought he was really good at pass protection in center. You see him, he's, he's going one on one. He's got he just has great technique, hands inside, look at this, great base, just feet right where right they need to be, and he's able to get a good anchor and get some help there from uh from Simpson. So I really like Parham at center. I thought Parham did a really good job at center. I think Cotton is getting pushed back a little bit here. I think you know he still has the high pad level. And you get a good breath from Leatherwood too, man. So I was, you know what I'm saying? There's good reps here, guys, but it, it, it does get ugly. That's some different parts here. So here's 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 another one. And this is what I want to talk about with what we talked about earlier with Cotton. And this is why Simpson, even though Simpson does have his lapses, he's definitely one of the smarter guys in his offensive line. You can see it right here. He sees the stunt too. He's not even blocking anybody, but he sees it. And he's able to give him all in that time, right? Great job. Right, so that that's 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 mental processing right there. That's the difference between, you know, that's that's why he plays. If you ever want to know why Johnson plays, <laughs> there it is. He's really good at picking these things up, and he picked it up really well. Allows Keenan Cole to get some yak right there, right, and then we'll show this last rep right here, which is, you know, if you want to talk about Leatherwood playing inside, here we go. We have a kind of a play action look here, right? He just kind of gets this just. Mo- bully but part of it is he's so late with his hands here like he hasn't even punched him yet hasn't punched hasn't punched hasn't punched hasn't punched hasn't oh the other guy still punched he still hasn't punched so now 77 who's been in the league 10 years this dude i looked it up i had to figure out who this guy was he's been in the league 10 years this is a grown man <laughs> john jenkins grown man <laughs> might be chris jenkins brother i think he is actually to be honest he's just pushing it all the way back Right to the quarterback. And that, and that's all hands. He shot his hands way too late. So, I mean, I mean, Leatherwood struggled, man. He did. He struggled. I, I could have, I, I, there was so much struggling I could have shown. I could have did a whole low light of everybody. I didn't get to like Cotton's bad reps. Um, <laughs> those were late. The, the big thing, thing is the thing is with, with this tape is that the bad reps were later on in the game PD. the bad reps were later on you know yeah. like, I think <laughs> that was the worst part it got worse and worse it, it and got worse, worse as the game went along yeah. like you're playing against worse players like Grant Gustin was just going off like John Jenkins 77 this big old you know Ten year vet just trying to <laughs> trying to stay on, feed his family. You know? They're getting their butts kicked. And, and 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 they're not getting any better. So, you know, that's that's the thing. You know, it's it's kinda you know, Simpson's I know Simpson's gonna play, and I know he got a lot of run, but you kinda see why he plays. But he's 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 has a little bit of idea of more awareness, even though he's he has some issues with some of his techniques still a little bit too. Um you know, James, he's got to work on that awareness. He, even though he plays a little better when he's with Simpson, he handles those things better. That's what I'm talking about continuity. Con- continuity. Continuity, yeah. Because he plays better. He plays those better with Simpson, and that might be communication. Simpson might be, hey, or something Something they talk. They understand it. 
Um, and I think Simpson plays really well with Colton Miller too. Um, and I know Colton Miller is not playing either, which might have a lot of these things going into a lot of it too. Um, so it, it's, it's, to me, it's just so much movement that it's hard for me to be like, okay, you're not picking these things up or you're not, maybe you're not hitting the right set that you might be, it might be a lot of confusion. You know, these guys are learning a bunch of different positions at one time. I think they're putting a lot on these linemen too. So I think that has a little bit of a yeah. factor in as well. Um, and, you know, I saw a questions about Isaiah Wynn, and, and I made the comment that by him playing right tackle, and he's never played right tackle before, like, in his life. I mean, he hasn't played right tackle. I know some people think playing right tackle is just like you just, you know, flip it over and just, just go out there and they're just perfectly, you know, the same guys, right? Um, but it'll be interesting to see what he did. And the reason why he's playing right tackle – for New England is, is like, it seems like they're in a contract dispute because he's in a contract year. And then he played left and, you know, Bill Belichick doesn't want to pay him. So he's like, I'll just move you to right. And then I don't have to pay you as much if you're good at a right tackle. And that could just be like, well, you're, you're a right tackle though. So, <laughs> you know, that's what Belichick's probably doing. And uh, he missed volunteer workouts. So, and, and these, you know, these, these, a lot of these guys don't, they don't want to play right tackle because they don't get paid as much. And he's in a contract year. And then we're going to trade for him to play right tackle. Is he going to, you know, I don't know. It's just a lot. It's a lot to, to, to get him. So Isaiah like, Wynn is an interesting player. I mean, he's, what, six foot two? Yeah, he's a shorty guy, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, gosh, I mean, I know that he's good. I know his technique is great. You know, he has played on the inside in his career. Mm-hmm. The only tackle spot that he's played so far in the NFL is at the left tackle position. Yeah. And it's one thing to say, hey, we want you to learn how to play right tackle. It's another thing to say, hey, we want you to learn how to play right tackle while you're going to be blocking Khalil Mack and Joy Bosa and, you know, and Randy Gregory. Yeah. And that's a lot different to say, hey, we want you to pray, you know, just try this out. You know, in this division, asking a guy to switch positions before they, they you know, if, if they tra- say they traded for Isaiah Win and they said, hey, we want you to play right tackle, he's going to have to learn that. What if he's like, one, no. One week, with one week to go, you know, I don't know, man. And I don't, I don't like his profile as a tackle. He's six foot two. He's a six foot two tackle. I mean, I'm not saying that it's impossible, but it would be, it, it's he's extremely like at the very far end of like what a, an NFL tackle looks like. You know, like it's it, he's an outlier. You know, yeah. I mean, he's played size. well at left tackle in the NFL. He's played well. Um, I mean, that's why they they, they got they, they did his option. You know, they did his option for that. Um, he's played well, so. You know, it's, it's more that they just did this really crazy thing where they moved him to right tackle for no reason. I mean, <laughs> they, but Trip Brown was the right tackle. <laughs> they switched him. That's all contract. You can't tell me that Bill Belichick's not playing hardball. But he's – because he didn't go to voluntary workouts. And then he came back to minicamp, mandatory minicamp. He's like, you're right tackle now. <laughs> Trace the left. Yikes. <laughs> you know, so – so it's it's that's gonna be a good uh, interesting dynamic with that if they did trade for him. But I mean, there is guys out there. I mean, like Brian Bulag is out there, I and mean, Bulag is not worse than any of these guys are in in this place. You know, true, true. Yeah, he's not. I mean, he's not the greatest guy. But so real quick on the topic of switching from right to left. Okay. Yes. Mm, uh, I believe it was Mitchell Schwartz on Twitter when someone asked about switching from right to left, I I believe it was Mitchell Schwartz who said, it's like trying to wipe your butt with your left hand when you've been wiping it with your right hand your whole life. Okay. That's what he said. It's like, and then even like when we saw Trent Brown, Trent Brown was a really effective right tackle coming over from New England, having played left tackle. He did play right tackle at San Francisco. So we saw him make that switch but why was Trent Brown effective? Was it because of his technique or just because he's just a beast of a man, right? We saw him have, like, really questionable kick step, you know, like the way that he, his sets, it, it was, it's not how you coach it, okay? This is not what it should look like. But he's six foot eight, three 380 pounds, 
and got, he's just a brick wall out there. Okay, so that's not. So he did it. Yeah, he's sick. He's a he's a freak of nature. Literally, like this guy's mm-hmm. a freak of nature. Trent Brown, when he, especially when he's healthy and in shape. So yeah, he was able to do it. But asking you know Isaiah Wynn, who's much smaller, not as physically dominant, to do it when that guy he's a guy who leans on technique to go and say, hey, switch your technique up. Uh, I think that's questionable. I think any team that wants Isaiah win, they should want him to be left tackle or to be a left guard for them. Uh, I see Jim asked this question. Yeah, he played left guard. He played 25 snaps left guard last year. I don't know how many snaps. I tried, I tried to look it up. I was trying to see how snaps that how many played a left guard, uh, left tackle. And, you know, and, and then I, I was making a joke. Too. I mean, the best right tackle on the team is Colton Miller, man. He played right tackle 654 snaps in UCLA. <laughs> I still right. don't understand what Tom Cable was thinking when he drafted Colton Miller and Brandon Parker when Colton Miller played right tackle and Brandon Parker played left tackle and he switched them. Like I still and, Don, and Donald Penn. And Donald Penn. Like, <sighs> like he easily could have just plugged Colton Miller into the right tackle and we wouldn't even have this problem. He could have drafted him. We wouldn't even have this problem. A, <laughs> you'd be cheaper. Uh, anyways. Tom Cable. Tom Cable. Bro, that's just the craziest. And then Brandon Parker sucked. <laughs> right? That's just the most weirdest thought process. Like, he thought, uh, you know? Anyways. Yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, any other thoughts? I did uh, offensive line. Like, I wanted to mention Parham. I thought Parham played really well at center. I thought that was interesting how well he played at center over guard. They put him out there at guard. He didn't play well. I don't think he did at guard at all. Um, you could definitely see a lot of the issues that he had with play strength that we talked about before in the draft. But at center, man, I thought he looked really well. I thought he, you know, um, I thought he had that line ready to go. I, I thought he looked like the leader at center. You um, think he's just an opening, opening day starter at center? Prime? Uh, I don't want to say that. I, don't wanna, I mean, if you're asking what I would do, <laughs> Yes. Yes, I mean, I would. Uh, you know, I think James James is a is a great backup center. That's what I would say. Uh, if if you if you need to there you serve go, him. there you go. And and, and, I, and I know James played call a tackle call too, but James is like six two as well. I think he's that's why he can't play tackle in NFL. Right, he's like, he's like six. He's like six four. He's six. Four. Is he? Yeah, is he, he is. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why does he look so short on tape? He's, he's bending at the waist so much. He bends <laughs> too much. It, really? He's just really. Yeah, look it up. Someone, someone look it up. Someone look it up. And, and, I, I think confirm it. Two hundred ninety-nine pounds. He can't play tackle. Yeah, he's, but he's, but he's, yeah. Imagine it heavy. with Joey Bosa or Khalil back, Khalil back, like with Mike Graffit, throw him in the stands. Right. <laughs> tackle. James uh, is not an option. He's not an option at tackle, guys. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, it's just. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm like. Really, he's six four. He. He looks like he's six one, six two. Play. That's like that's why I thought he moved him. But hey, you know, Mark Sanchez yeah. is six four too. I, I could never. T- I always that always tripped me out. Mark Sanchez does not look six four. Uh, but you watch him on TV play quarterback, and he was he was six four too. But so, well, six four at USC. Who knows? Because you know Reggie Bush was six feet at USC, and then he came into the NFL. He was five <laughs> five ten and a half. Eddie James is six five. <laughs> Good lord. Six five according to Google. These guys are saying six four here. I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, but he bends he bends so much at the waist that he's always playing with his head lower than everyone else. That's what it is. I guess so, man. Uh, but it doesn't matter. He's not an option at tackle. It's, it's, it, 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 isn't six four tall for a center? That's a tall center, isn't it? That is a tall center, yes. That's on the taller end for a center. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's like that's like, but, a, like a hundred percentile center. But you want you want them to have long legs. It's easier for them for the quarterback to get under center. But it doesn't matter because it's a shotgun league now. So you can be a, a six foot two center. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Right, I'm. Uh, you already ready to go here? I just want to. Uh, uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, you know, I, this is a good point. I mean, yeah. I get that, 
But I think so, I just, offensive lineman continuity is just so such a big thing, man. You got those guys that play together for like three or four years, man. Those are the best offensive lines. Like, you know, that's why I hate what the Chargers are doing. <laughs> they got Slater and Zion and Lindsey for like the, you know what I mean? And well, well, yeah. They still got Storm Norton and Trey Pipkins at right tackle though, so that makes me feel a lot better. They they have nobody who could block Max Crosby or Chandler Jones at right tackle either. So, um, yeah. All right, guys. One more question. One more question. I seen right here. Uh, thoughts? Horstead t- tight end. Oh, I don't think so. I think he's a practice squad guy. Practice squad tight end. They really, they really put they they didn't start throwing him the ball till till later. So <laughs> they've been hiding him, I think. <laughs> Keeping him on the low because he's getting open and making some catches. They've been hiding him. The, they go into the they go into the season with three tight ends. Uh yeah, I think so. So then obviously Waller Moreau, and then who's the third then between Horstead I would go and Bowers. Or Bowers. Yeah. Nick but Nick Bowers. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they even try to look for some a different tight end there. So uh, yeah, we'll see. He did have a good game. Worse than he had a good game. <laughs> All right, man. So definitely uh make sure you guys subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I'm sorry this made me laugh saying he, he did try to play Belvier at center at six eight. <laughs> What's up with David Tackles at center, bro? I got it. Like, what is? <sighs> so, all right, guys, subscribe, Bell subscribe, turn, right. subscribe. <laughs> I just don't understand that transition in his head. Like, as you just... uh, subscribe, 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 guys. Make sure you guys follow us on Twitter. Uh, you know, uh, make sure you guys do that. So, follow us on Twitter at the Mark John NFL at BD Williams eighteen. Panda Supplements discount code TDL for 35% off. So definitely appreciate you guys listening. We got 282 in here. So make sure you guys figure that out and, um, you know, keep listening to us. Join us. Join the membership. You guys are doing some awesome uh, cool stuff in the membership stuff. Uh, so uh, make sure you guys check that out. And uh, appreciate all the listeners. We're out. Peace. Later, y'all.